So should you should be able to do this. Okay, fine, Siri. Um, okay, share. Under the security settings, you should be able to like see share screen. Yes. And then you can enable it, and then you should be able to share screen. Okay, I just. Okay. Maybe since you're a host, you can do it anyway. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. A future socialist society. I should have written John Molino. Okay. Um, this was an alternate title. Um, <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that everyone's muted. <laughs> oh, Connor Rudolph entered the waiting room. Okay. Um, okay, this is John Molino. Um, uh, socialism. Oh, wait, no, we'll start here. Yeah, so there is a need. He says there is a need for socialist propaganda to. Uh, for an angry denunciation of capitalism. So that's why I had that other slide. Um, he emphasized the need for hard-headed analysis of strategy and tactics, um, but also the inspiration that makes the struggle worthwhile. Um, he also said we can't, um, we can't exactly predict the future, but we can dream, struggle, learn, and organize, analyze together. Um, this is a quote, which I can't really see. Oh, maybe I can minimize everybody. Um, how do I? OK. No. Um, socialism is a historical process and can only be achieved in a fully classist society on a worldwide scale. Um, how do I? OK. So the conquest of political power um, the working class has to, must create its own state. Um, the state will be a centralized organization with ultimate authority in society and a decisive armed force, um, a workers militia, um, which will, uh, service will be on a rotating basis um, to uh, train and involve as many workers as possible and, um, ensure that uh, like the militia wouldn't be like separated from the working class um, as a whole and you know keep everyone to be a part of um, who's able at least in this way to be a part of um, learning how to run and structure the society. Um, and this sort of militia will be more effective because of the roots in community um, and it won't be a separated arm of the state but rather comprised of, yeah, community itself. Um, the officers in the militia would be elected, um, not the collection of uh, type of people that are in a capitalist police force, to put it in that weird way. <laughs> Um, so the fundamental feature of the worker state will be that it relies upon and mobilizes the self-activity, organizing ability, and creativity of the mass of the working class to build a new society from the bottom upwards. Um, our democracy today depends on the passivity of the working people and other things. <laughs> um, so the Nationals Worker Workers Co Council. Um, Every state institution will be responsible to the Nationals Worker Council. Um, uh, and there will be, um, yeah, different political parties will operate freely in the councils and the party with the majority support from the workers would form the government. Um, and those are some examples of times this has happened. Um, every workers revolution in the last century um, or attempted revolution um, like the Russian Soviets has been constructed in this way. So that's where he got, I guess, the inspiration for that um, structure. Um, 
Such councils would arise during the revolution for the working class to coordinate its forces. Um, I feel, I'm worried I'm being too thorough. <laughs> thorough. This might be a long presentation. Um, uh, if delegates don't represent their will of the electors, they'll simply be recalled and replaced by mass meetings in workplaces. Um, instead of, uh, yeah, instead of one day's democracy every five years for everyone, like we have now waiting for election cycles, um, in a socialist society, there would be an ongoing involvement in actually running the state for the vast majority. Um, oh, I can't remember what's coming next. Oh yes, so we would, um, there's also of course um, that we would have to repress the bourgeoisie and exclude them from the electoral process. Um, so this would be um, the bourgeoisie in that case. Um, very sad. <laughs> this too as well. <laughs> or this. Um, <laughs> okay. I had fun with the other images for this. <laughs> All right. Um, it is so weird to give a presentation where I can't see anyone. <laughs> Um, repression and freedom under workers' power. Um, so this this image is from the socialist film 1984. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, oh, I met. Hi, Noel. If you can hear me, I don't know. Um, yeah. So we'll need the. So because of capitalist propaganda, there are many myths and misconceptions of what socialism actually is, um, particularly because of the defeat of the Russian Revolution. Um, so in order to maintain workers' power, some repression in the capitalist state bourgeoisie will be necessary, um, the dictatorship of the proletariat. Um, the very newness of the worker state will make its rule fragile. So yes. It's very important. Um, am I the only one in charge of uh, letting people in the meeting? No, I got your back. Okay, cool. <laughs> I figured. Okay, what's next? The conquest of economic power. Okay, so the foundations of socialism or uh, uh, lies in the economy. So, um, of course, the working class basically is the economy um, and they will have to take power of all means of protection um, and which will need to be done quickly, um, of course, while um, while we maintain repression of the capitalist state, bourgeoisie. Um, so economic power will be established through nationalization of all banks, exchange controls, land, um, followed by the takeover of main firms and industries, especially, Molinos says, uh, the decisive levers of economic power, probably in our case, like big corporations and politicians and et cetera, I guess. Um, so, First, nationalism will be uh, nationalization. <laughs> uh, will be a legal takeover at the top with the workers' ac action at the base. Um, there will be nationalization uh, without compensation in order to break the economic power of the bourgeoisie. Um, um, is Noel admitted? Because it says that they're still in the waiting room. Yeah, they're having trouble connecting, it looks like. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, I guess I don't need to worry about that. <laughs> um, and nationalization will be under workers' control, most importantly, um, by each factory or uh, workplace uh, to be run by an elected council accountable to periodic meetings of the workforce. Um, Yes, so there must first be workers' ownership and control of the industry, followed by the introduction of a planned economy. Um, so, uh, workers, 
yeah, the planning process would begin in workplace meetings, factory councils, workers councils, um, with the determination of people's needs and priorities and an assessment of the productive capacities of each workplace. Um, councils will draw up a coherent plan to be submitted to the working class for debate and to its representatives, representatives in the workers councils for amendment and approval. Very technical, detailed idea, ideas, I guess, I don't know. Um, this is a little bit of Frida Kahlo. Um, spreading the revolution, the international dim uh, dimension. Um, so socialism cannot be built in one country. Um, and this means organizing a revolutionary movement internationally. Um, uh, because of the threat of capitalist counter revolution, um, Oh, yes. So yeah, this will mean that the threat of capitalist counter-revolution will be ended. Um, national wars will cease. The problems of world poverty and under, underdevelopment um, can be overcome. Um, people can migrate freely. Um, roots of racism will be destroyed, we'll work, which we'll also talk about more in a minute. Um, and it will mean that international socialism uh, which Milano called the harnessing of all the world's resources for the benefit of united humanity <laughs> um, will become a reality. Okay, um, producing for need towards abundance. So um, military funding will be so over, um, which mean, would mean uh, millions of dollars to be redirected to, probably more, more than millions, I don't know, uh, redirected to socially useful purposes. Um, no longer, there will no longer be enormous waste um, because social, socialism begins with the resources it inherits from capitalism. Uh, the supply of goods will remain limited and the workers will still work for money wages in which, uh, which in turn they will use to purchase those goods until eventually there will be a progression from capitalist production to a socialist production so that supply exceeds de uh, demand and needs are met. So basically, I think he's trying to emphasize that um, it's not gonna be immediate and things will have to, um, yeah, it's a process, it's a historical process. Um, yeah, so housing, we will, we can build more houses and allocate them to, uh, according to need. Um, if people want to move, he talked about um, people can transfer to vacant accommodation or just exchange houses instead of uh, buying and selling them. Um, which I feel like is kind of what we do now in like a really complicated classes, fucked up way. Anyway. Um, and of course, money will steadily lose its usefulness to the point where it can be dispensed with altogether as buying and selling fade away. But if everyone is free, will anyone bother to work? <laughs> um, the transformation of work. So he says this would be the most important task of all. Maybe that's up for debate. Um, the work week will be systematically reduced. Um, automation will be used to eliminate the most unpleasant menial jobs. The division of labor will be progressively overcome. Everyone will become both producer and planner of production in Marx's words, um, will become not only a means, work will become not only a means of life, but life's prime want. Um, yeah, the ultimate socialist principle from each according to their ability to each according to their needs. Beautiful. Um, I liked this quote, human beings are not naturally lazy. Um, observe the closest we can get to that mythical being, a natural person, a baby or young child, and you will see they overflow with curiosity, energy and enthusiasm for learning, for activity and for life. It is capitalism, oppression and alienated, alienated labor that wear people down, demoralize and break them, destroy their energy and convince them that life is best spent with their feet up in front of the television. Women's liberation. 
Okay. So basically without the complete emancipation of women, it's impossible, um, he says, to speak of complete emancipation of the working class. Um, therefore impossible to speak of socialism. So there must be an abolition of every vestige of legal inequality between men and women and an outlawing of every form of discrimination against women. And I added trans folks and queer folks, um, of course, to that. Um, and yes, so all major institutions in society will be under democratic workers control um, to ensure that these laws are translated into practice and not just said in a constitution, I suppose. Um, bodily autonomy, this would include the right to free con contraception, abortion on demand, uh, a right to immediate divorce, equal pay, job opportunities, everything, um, the right to, I don't know, sexual freedom of expression. Um, yeah, abolition of capitalist uh, sexist representation in media for profit. Um, yeah, the abolition of the family institution, he talks about basically that the in capitalism, the key task of the family um, is the efficient and caring socialization of housework and child care. Um, uh, yeah, which would be nice things if, if everyone had the right to when and, and how and why they did that or if they did that. Um, yeah, so abolition of family, great idea. So I added a little bit of a feminist slide here. <laughs> um, you do not have to be me in order for us to fight alongside each other. I do not have to be you to recognize that our wars are the same. What we must do is commit ourselves to some future that can include each other and to work toward that future with the particular strengths of our individual identities. And in order to do this, we must allow each other our differences as we recognize our sameness. Beautiful. I like the colors. Um, can't have capitalism without racism. So, um, yeah, essentially the worker state will treat as a most serious offense, all racial discrimination, racial harassment, and all expression, expressions of racist ideology. Um, there will be militant anti-racist education. Um, the destruction of capitalism will tear up the roots of racism, but he also um, emphasizes that this will um, take time as well. Um, and a lot of effort on the society's part. Um, he goes into a little bit of depth about why racism is uh, connected to capitalism, um, that it's the specific product of the rise and development of the capitalist economic system, the slave trade, um, and reinforced by imperialism. Um, yes, uh, dehumanization. So um, seeing people of other races, basically creating race through white supremacy, allowed them to commit horrific crime, uh, crimes against uh, people they considered to be less human. Um, I think I just talked about working class divisions, so that's fine. All right, and learning, almost sort of almost done. Uh, learning for the future. So schools under capitalism versus socialism. I feel like I'm taking a long time here. It's already 9.30. <laughs> okay, the role, the role of schools under capitalism is to reproduce the class structure of society. The task of the worker's state would be to create an educa education system that um, fosters the desire to learn. Uh, quite opposite of what we have now. Um, I will skip that and that, not that important. What is true of education will also be true of culture generally. You could say that now, sort of, but in a negative way. Um, okay. Um, socialist education will equip everyone to take an active planning and administrative role. Of course, school will be the all around development of the human personality. Exciting. I will, yeah, let's read this. Uh, to me, the classroom continues to be a place where paradise can be realized, a place of passion and possibility, a place where spirit matters, where all that we learn and know leads us to greater connection and greater understanding of life lived in community. Beautiful. 
socialist idea, sort of. Yeah, I think she's a socialist feminist. Okay, we're getting there. Um, ultimate goal of socialism uh, uh, and of the struggle working class is freedom. So, yeah, we want real freedom from hunger, poverty, war, oppression of race and sex, and um, yeah, this can only be done by establishing uh, freedom of the working class to run society. I think, yeah, okay. Oh, this is important. The worker state also places certain restrictions on the freedom of the working class itself, and the worker state must be um, dismantled as well eventually. Um, and the state cannot be dis, uh, dismantled until the international victory of socialists, socialism, total defeat of the counter-revolutionary bourgeoisie. <sighs> this is such a long presentation. <laughs> um, and the abolition of the root of all exploitation and class divisions. Um, the achievement, then you'll have the achievement of material abundance and goods only distributed according to need. Um, yes, there's a little bit about crime. Um, it will, won't be happen because the need won't won't be there, um, and otherwise uh, you can deal with it with community um, involvement um, collectives. Okay, yeah, I think that's um, it. It's over. <laughs> Bravo! That was great. <laughs>